Hey everybody, Masak here, and welcome back to another video of Shining Force. And um, to start this one off, I just want you all to know that something happened to the original footage for this part of the fight. So this is me re-recording it from a safe state that I had just before the end of the first chapter. Thankfully I had that so I could still get this recorded for you. But this is actually my practice file. So the levels are going to be a little different. As I didn't re... as well. What it is, is I did not go back and do the last fight twice and do this fight twice to level them up. So everyone's going to be about a level lower than they should be or some of them will be. But aside from that, compared to what you'll hear in the video for the end, the tail end of this fight, in this re-recording of it, I do actually have all of the power staffs equipped on the three people, Chris, Tao, and Lau, and I have the speed ring equipped on Chris. So aside from that, in the levels, everything else will pretty much be the same, except um, I actually ended the first video of this chapter off, as you'll recall. After killing about the first two or three guys, I'm going to try to get up to about the same point where the last video, so this is taking the place of ended, and the one that'll be coming after this starts. Which is about halfway through it, in the desert. Up here. I had all these guys, I had these bats, the two snipers, and the dark mage taken out. And I was sitting right here in the one, in the video that will be coming after this one starts. So I'll try to reach that spot, all in one video here. I took care of everything in the town. There's nothing else to really do right now except for get through this recording for you guys and get it up there. All right, so as you can see, we're on Chris's turn. I'm not gonna really move her just yet because she is a healer. All right, Gort, we'll move you forward and attack one of these dark dwarfs. Okay, he did nine points of damage and got four experience. That was a pretty solid attack there. And another thing that would be a dead giveaway, this is a re-recording and I didn't um, sit there and level them up a couple times in this fight and the last fight, is that Chris is level 2, not level 3 right now. Anyone that is level 6 is from leveling up in the previous fight at the end of Chapter 1. Just to clarify that for all of you guys. Alright, so... As I am recording this, I am officially done with my first term of classes. I did fairly well, much better than I ever did in high school, but that was because to me, high school was a waste of time. Now obviously I don't condone just dropping out or flunking your classes in school. Get through school the best you can, guys. And then, you know, figure out what the heck you want to do with your life. But I aced this term, essentially. I'm really good about that, considering I never really did all that good in high school, but then, like I just told you, I only ever put about 75% of my effort into schoolwork and homework from high school. Because, like I just said, high school was more or less a waste of time to me. It felt like it was like, you know, a waste of my talent and whatnot. And as you can see what these dwarfs do, and I'll also go back over on the bat, the new enemy, the zomb Zombies status here shortly. Oof. So you're gonna surround Gord on me, huh? Hmm. Alright, so as you can see, you have these two dwarfs right here. These two alone effectively block you from moving past the bridge once you move right there. Then this dwarf came down right here, and as you can see, three of the four bats have, come in, have moved down to start attacking me as well. And what happened is, like, any time you hit, like, forests or hills, watch these areas like this, it, this is like a forest and this is a hilly area. Well, the desert does the same thing when you hit it. It reduces your movement by 30%, dropping your total movement allowance by two or three spaces. So once we hit there, we have to be careful keeping everyone together and um, drawing out the snipers. Because if you get too close, you're going to have the two snipers and the mage here. Oop, nope, wrong key. 
Um, here we go, yeah. As you can see, the mage has blaze 2. Like I said, dark mages have blaze 2. And you'll ha be sitting here having the dark mage and the two snipers casting blaze 2 and shooting at you from a distance. Massively damaging most of your party. So what I do once I get up there, as you'll see when we get to it, is I like to kind of draw out a sniper, kill one, then go for the... Uh, well, I like to draw this sniper out, kill him, while I keep everyone back enough so I don't draw all three of them down at once. And then I will move up and take out this sniper. Then once both of the snipers are gone, I will go for the Dark Mage. And from there, as you'll see in the next video, after I take out these two snipers and the Dark Mage, I group everyone up and move them up to take out the two mages and these four zombies up here. Alright, so I'm going to try to move everyone around. Hopefully Gork can get a turn so I can move him away from there and send, put someone else in that space to attack. I'm going to move the leader back a little bit so that he doesn't get bombarded by enemies. Alright, and we still have Gong right now because we still don't have... Enough total recruits, slash party members, to effectively swap people out so it won't let us do that yet. Alright, there's no reason for us to move Chris. Nice. Okay, there we go. can move Gort now. And now I can actually put another one of my fighters in that space to start doing damage. Alright, Ken. Finish this guy off for me. Alright, Ken attacks. Six points of damage, defeating the Dark Dwarf. Very nice. Seven points of experience, 25 gold. Not too bad of a start, but can't, you know, relax just yet. We have two more dwarfs and three bats that are already on our tail right now. And, of course, the other dwarf's going to move in and block our exit, too. Alright, so the dwarf attack can doing three damage to him. Now the other dwarf is going to attack him. Dwarf attacks, another 3 damage. He's now taken 6 total damage. Alright, let's see. Um, I don't know if I can get a good blaze 2. Oh, okay. Um. Alright, so it looks like I can either attack the two bats, the bat with the one dwarf, or the bat with the other dwarf. Right, let's attack the two bats. Bats are really quick, and they tend to avoid slash dodge most physical attacks 80% of the time. Alright, so Tau attack the two bats with Blaze 2, doing 9 damage to each of them. And I think it said she got 6 experience. Now our fourth bat is coming down here to attack her. She took 3 points of damage. Not too worried just yet. But, um... We'll see how things go. The next time I get a turn, I will go up and show you the zombie status window and discuss them once again. As I'm pretty sure when I first entered this fight in the first video for Chapter 2, I went over what the zombie stat, zombies um, statistics were. But I'll show you again. Oop, nope. Here we go. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, the, a zombie has 18 attack, 13 defense, 5 move, and 7 agility. Now, as you can imagine from that, they do not take too much damage from physical attacks. They might take 4 or 5 points of damage a physical hit. And they can hit rather hard. But, zombies are weak to fire, so using Blaze 2 on them, you will do 10 to 11 points of damage per zombie. And something listed on here! Again, another hidden ability. Or, um, another hidden effect of their attacks. Just like how the bats could put you to sleep when they hit you, but it wasn't listed amongst anything on their window. Zombies, when hit you, they can poison you, so be wary of that. Oof, okay, sorry about that little burp there. I was drinking a bit of soda a second ago. Alright, Ken, uh, I'm going to move you back to get healed and pull you out of the fray. Hopefully I can get Tau a turn here shortly to move her out of the way too. Ah, uh, friggin' bat. Alright. Bat attack Tau, doing 3 damage. Now I definitely need to heal her. Alright, so Lao, let's move you up and heal Tau. Lao casts heal level 1. Heals Tau for 6 points. 
And he gets, come on game, 10 experience. Alright. Ah, darn it. Can't move Chris next to Ken to heal him just yet. Alright, I'll move Gort there so that the bat can't attack him that easily. I need to get Tau a turn here so I can move her away from everything. Alright. I know I could cast a Blaze 2 right there. To, um... I was saying, I know I could have cast Blaze 2 right there to help weaken everything a lot more and get past this blockade in front of the bridge easier. But there would have been too much risk doing that with everything right there, and there would have been no way I could move Tao without leaving her right next to something to hit her that could potentially damage her and kill her. Alright, so we'll have May move up and attack this bat. Please hit the bat. Yes! Seven points of damage and five experience. I get so annoyed with the bats in these first couple chapters because they, like, avoid your attacks so often that it's ridiculous. I was having that issue rerunning the fight before this one with the bats in that one where, like, five or six times I tried to attack them, they avoided the attack. Alright, so, anyways, guys, Christmas, or the holidays in general, are coming up next week. Anything you guys are celebrating that you all might want to, that you're really looking forward to. Sorry, my bad, trying to find my wording there. But yeah, so holidays are coming up. Whatever holiday you guys might celebrate, post in the comments and know, Tommy, what you might be looking forward to having, what you might be looking forward to, meaning fa spending time with family, having dinner, or what. Because I know with us, it's like we meet with a bunch of family, we have a big dinner, and open each other's presents. And on the... Eve before and on the eve of the holiday we go to my one aunt's and exchange with her and have a big dinner with her. Alright, move you forward a little bit. Gonna move Ken back. Hopefully I can get Tao a turn to move her further away. I think I healed her though. Alright, let's check. Yeah, Tao is healed. Oh, come on, I'm getting tired of these, of this with these guys getting so many turns. Alright, so. Nice big group of fear four enemies here for Tau to blast with Blaze 2. Alright, so Tau hit the first Dark Dwarf for 18 damage, killing him. Hit the second Dwarf for 8 damage. Oh, she's hitting them for 8 damage each, sorry. But she hit the first Bat. She hit the first three enemies for eight damage, killing the first Dark Dwarf that she hit in the first bat, and then she killed the second bat, hitting it for nine damage. And she got 145 coins, and I think you can scroll back because I think it showed you how much experience she got after each kill as opposed to at the end of the entire spellcasting. And these, this bat is really annoying the hell out of me. Because he's attacked May twice and put her to sleep twice now. Nice, I'm glad that the leader did not miss. Alright, you got 15 experience and 60 gold. Yep, May is still asleep. At least I can move my characters past her to, um... Help. So it's not like just because she's, like, fast asleep on the bridge I can't move my members past another member where you can't move them past an enemy unit that's in your way. Alright, Gort. Yeah. Nine points of damage, defeating the Dark Dwarf. And you got eight experience and 25 gold. Very good. Now, sorry if I might sound easily or something right now. Winter time is when I get, like, some pretty bad winter allergies. I get, like, a nasal drip and dry throat at times. And some other stuff, and the nasal drip along with like a stuffy nose kind of makes my throat and nose a little nasally and cloggy. Or, well, yeah, let me rephrase that. 
Like, the stuffy nose and nasal drip, like, makes my voice kind of nasally sounding from, like, phlegm and stuff in my throat. When we leave it down there. And, um, put him out of harm's way. Move Chris up and attack. Very nice. Chris attacked the bat for 8 points of damage, getting 27 experience. Alright. Something I will tell you is that I do not have Chris in the video I will be posting after this, so if she survives this video, she won't be in the next one. Because, like I said, you know, I, I previously recorded this entire fight, and something happened to the first video of this fight that I'm re-recording right now to show you guys. Where I, like, couldn't use it at all for some reason. Something corrupted it or damaged it. Not the audio file, it corrupted the actual video recording. So, um, sorry for breaking there for a second. So I end up having to re-record this, and what happened in the initial recording of the start at the... What happened in the initial recording at the first half of this fight was Chris ended up getting killed at one point. So she won't be in the second half of this fight. When I post that video up, just to let you guys know ahead of time. Now we're actually kind of closing in on 20 minutes here in the next 4 minutes or so. I will try to get up to where I was before regardless because... Really all it is right now is it's... Moving everyone up to kill those last 3 guys and stopping the video. There's nothing left stopping me from moving forward. It's just a matter of me um, being cautious and making sure that I don't, like, get all three of them attacking one party member and killing them on me. So I have to kind of move them up as a group, but move them a little slowly so that I don't sit there and get one and draw the attention of all three of those guys on one of mine. Because they're all ranged, they can all attack me from at least two squares, two spaces away, so I have to be careful about that when moving up. Because the two of them are archers, and then the third one is a mage. And I'm pretty sure the archer's attack does about as much as Blaze 2 does when the mage would cast that on me. And I might potentially cut out some of this moving forward. We'll see how things go. Sorry there, I was thinking for a moment that was why I went silent. So does anyone have any games that they're potentially looking or um, planning to get with money from the holidays or get for the holidays as a gift from someone? Oof, okay, so yeah, the sniper moved down and attacked Ken doing 7 damage. Alright, so that's good, at least we drew one of the snipers out. I just have to make sure I don't get anyone killed now. Alright. Oh, come on, I have like less than 10 minutes and only 3 guys left to kill. I can... Shouldn't take too long. Oh, very nice, Ken. Ken attacked for 12 damage. Can attack doing 12 points of damage, bringing him down to 1 point and got a 14 experience. Now Gort's going to finish the job. Um, I skipped over how much damage he did, but you might be able to go back and see it in the video for yourself. But he got 17 experience and 80 gold for that. Alright, now let's see if within the next 6 minutes or so I can get... these um last two guys taken care of nice we drew out the other archer he attacked Gort, getting a critical hit but Gort has really good defense so even though he got hit with a critical he only took one damage all right come on all right i guess we're gonna have Gort attack him first 
Nice. Gordon attack for 13. Gordon attack doing 13 damage exactly. To just do enough to kill him. Got about 18 experience and 80 in 80 gold. All right, one more guy to take out, and then we can end this video off and be all cut up again. And all I have to do is just edit this one and post this, and then I could post the other one in another day or two for you guys. Oof, okay, yes, that's what I was talking about there. Mage came down and did Blaze 2 on Gort and Ken, and did a hefty amount of damage to each of them. Ah, oh, darn it. She's not... I can't get her close enough to actually hit him. Ah, oh, crap. Are you going to kill Gord on me? Whew, Gord evaded it. Very good. Gord did survive in the original recording of this, so even if he did die there, you would see him in the second half of this fight, so don't worry about it. Alright, come on. One freaking guy left. I just want to have someone else get some attacks in here for experience on him. Alright, Luke Attack doing 12 damage. Got 9 experience. Brought him down to 1 hit point. Alright, Lao, it's up to you. Alright, Lao Attack doing 12 points of damage. Defeated the Dark, defeated the dark Mage, my bad. Um, got 92 gold, and you can scroll back a bit and see what he got for experience. Okay, so. Now we are essentially back where I ended off this video before. So I'm just going to move everyone up a bit, get them in a bit of formation here to move forward. And in the next video, we will be back to the original recording of this. With everyone a little higher leveled and better off. So with all that said, everybody, I will see you all in the next video where we finish off this fight head into Man Arena, which is up above here. And we will find princess. We will find the princess. Try to tell her what happened. See and explore the town a little bit. And I will see you all then. So until then, everybody, remember to subscribe, hit that like button, and I will see you all when we finish this fight. Goodbye.